this video is going to be about King Charles III and the effects of this um, TV series, The Crown. So we're going to talk about King Charles and The Crown. We might throw Camilla in there too, so I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Maybe tell somebody else to watch my channel and maybe they'll subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So, you know, I don't expect that Charles is watching The Crown, but certainly he must get some feedback here and there about it, and specifically when it's talking about Diana, or maybe he's just hiding his head in the sand about the whole thing. Camilla, on the other hand, I think she would be getting some very um, interesting um, comments from her sisters about that. So, let's see what's going on with King Charles and the uh, video uh, TV series The Crown. So we're going to find out, is this really, this uh, The Crown series, is this really having an effect on King Charles III? Or um, alternatively, is uh, Camilla an influence? Or does it just not matter at all? Uh, we're all just supposing what uh, goes on and that's not the case. Um, but then again, they're just folks like us. There must be some things that they just watch on television or talk about. Uh, with their closest family so i mean harry married a girl from television so that tells you something right there so king charles and the crown and maybe camilla let's get into that but uh, before we do that just have a moment so meditation Okay, so why don't we start off, wow, so why don't we start off uh, right now with just three cards to say, uh, is he affected by this, uh, this series of The Crown? Three cards. One, two, three. I mean, might as well start there, see what the cards say. Okay, in three cards, is King Charles III affected by the crown? So, interesting. So, this is the Eight of Coins. Now, the Eight of Coins is really studying your craft and getting it perfect. Um, and uh, so, does the crown matter to King Charles? And this has to represent Charles uh, studying uh, his craft, uh, trying to get it perfect. More... Um, this person isn't watching television. This person is more uh, focused on getting this job done. Okay, doing something useful uh, and not wasting their time. The uh, challenge, or the next card for that, as to whether uh, it matters to him at all, is the Page of Cups. Okay, Cups are emotion. The page is the weakest of the royal cards, and so he just brings the very least offer of emotion to this situation. Okay, uh, we'll just bring a message. Okay, look, a simple little flower. So uh, it. So this is telling us that the TV series does doesn't not have an influence. It has, you know, a little suggestion of an influence. And then the last card for this is justice. Um, so uh, either that there uh, will be an equal um, measure of, of justice uh, for uh, Charles's thinking and how this goes about, or just showing us that this is um, an equal measure, uh, not equal measure, but you know, the appropriate uh, measure of uh, importance and justice in this for Charles, and it's not particularly uh, something he uh, worries about every second. So he's aware, but um, you know, it's not that big a deal, I don't think. Um, so let's see what do, uh, because this whole thing has to do with his uh, relationship with Diana and um, all of that. 
ugliness. So let's see what six cards can tell us along uh, that journey. Uh, Charles, um, the story that's happening in the crown, and his feelings. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, Charles, let's get six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So Charles and the crown, you know, it's it's like a gnat, you know, not if even that much of a bother to him, but the signifier of this story between jo uh, King Charles and the crown. And particularly now that we're dealing with uh, this Diana story. Oh, look, <laughs> the Hierophant. So the Hierophant is the, is the would be the government, actually. So I would this tells me right off the bat that the most important to him right now is the government, as it should be. Interesting. In an appropriate measure, though. And the challenge to that uh, is the Moon card. Oh, secrets being revealed. Yeah, the challenge to him dealing with the government uh, in the way that he must now is that now everything is known to him. Okay, what he thought when he thought he knew probably everything there was to know. No, everything is, is out there now, and that's a real challenge to hold back his opinion on how it should affect uh, the country that he loves, and that his mother just died before he gave her life for. And yeah, and then the base card of this whole thing is the tower moment, which is just what I said. You know, understanding the importance of of this. Okay, the past of this. Uh, with the Two of Swords, well, yeah, having to have made a choice, which is funny because there was no choice uh, to be made. Uh, it was just something that's going to happen. But yeah, having to make a choice, it, it probably feels somewhat like that, even though you have no choice. And look at that. Again, up in the sky, the best that you want to do, what you want to aim for, what you want to come out of it is some sort of a justice. So we're moving on from the story of the crown completely. And uh, this has just gone right on to the real deal. Okay, what's really important. This is, is a nothing. And then the final uh, is the magician. And that, look at this guy. So this magician has the ability, the tools, the know-how, the smarts to get done at whatever it is that he needs to do, uh, even if it's an illusion uh, that will fool us all. So, yeah, the likely outcome is that he has what it takes uh, to, you know, to be the king in the appropriate way. I'm going to go ahead and just do four more cards just for the heck of it. But let's uh, shuffle them up for a second. So King Charles, uh, oh, well, just let's see, what can the cards continue to tell us uh, in this story? That's interesting. I'll read it all at the end. So the uh, very self of this uh, question between King Charles and this silly program, The Crown, is um, the Ten of Cups. So, oh, it's familial, um, almost uh, generational uh, emotional value. So, yeah, just the strongest... Uh, compassion for family possible. Very interesting. We're talking about Charles, we're talking about the monarchy, and we're talking about, you know, his family. And uh, that is in the environment of what? Okay. Environment of, ah, a new journey. Yeah, exactly what's going on right now. He's on this uh, this new, uh, and didn't, probably didn't think it would be this uh, foreign. Um, the hopes and the fears for this uh, this Ace of Wands, oh yeah, uh, Wands are actions, plans, forward movement, uh, getting things done. This Ace of Wands is just the biggest offer of that, you know, and so the hopes and the fears is that, um, you know, he gets this done right. And then the final outcome, because we're completely gone from this book now, and it's just delved right into uh, his responsibility and how he feels it. And the final outcome, look at that, is the King of Wands to be the king of making sure that his uh, plans uh, come to fruition, which the king would do. So, uh, you know, the question was Charles, King Charles III and the crown, does it affect him? And this doesn't even talk about Camilla whatsoever. I might just have to do three cards uh, in a minute just to, to get up a, uh, a footing on that. But anyway, so King Charles, the crown, does it matter? And the first thing that comes up is no, it's the, the Hierophant, stupid. <laughs> you know, it's the government. Uh, that's what matters. And the challenge to that are the secrets that he now knows. Uh, in the position that he's in and uh, the 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 basis of this whole thing is to avoid this tower moment this complete pandemonium you look at that I mean it just looks like almost Parliament is behind there just uh, on fire um, so there's that <laughs> and then the past of this with this two of swords is 
uh, truth, justice, rules, and law. That's what swords are. And so this two of swords, you're trying to have to make a, uh, a decision, a choice which way to go. And he would have chosen the, the nobler uh, path. And then the sky of this, it's funny that this comes up again, is uh, justice is just that uh, you're aiming for that perfect balance. And uh, you have to know that you've got everything that you need. Just study and you'll figure it out. and It'll be okay. But then the very self of that question has to do with his relationship to the monarchy. I mean, his family. <laughs> that's funny. And then the uh, and the uh, environment that that's in is the, the new journey that he's on as, a, as the fool just starting out really probably much more um, than he thought it was, uh, perhaps. And then the hopes and the fears of that with this Ace of Wands is that uh, this big action that you're now in charge of, you know, that you, you get it right. And then in the end, the likely outcome for everything is this King of Wands absolutely in charge of his actions. You know, don't worry, it's going to go your way. And there goes uh, anything about uh, the King and the Crown <laughs> as the TV program. But let's do three cards so we don't leave Camilla out of it all together. Okay, so so Camilla because she would have a kind of a different take on all of this, wouldn't she? I mean, she talks to her sisters a lot. They are um, ladies, but um, I'm sure are a bit more down to earth than uh, what might be going on behind palace walls. And um, and you know, sisters talk about what's going on, what their kids are doing, and watching, and how their kids are reacting to stuff. Okay, and hers is a very complicated history, as a matter of fact, if you think about her own kids and her grandkids on that side, and how all that, how do you not <laughs> teach them that Grandma is the wicked witch who caused the beautiful princess uh, to be queen, uh, to, you know, and then you take up the staff. But things are what they should be. So we just get three cards for Camilla. One, two, three. And took up the staff successfully, by the way. Um, she understand what the position meant. So Camilla, on this whole The Crown TV series thing with Charles. Uh, fortune. This is interesting. So this is the Wheel of Fortune, actually. And I always like to say the Wheel of Fortune is turning in a positive direction. And uh, but this card really more specifically speaks to really fortune uh, really not much misfortune except at the bottom there some folks are getting a little trampled on down here but um so this was just her fortune or good fortune or and then ah and then the center of that for camilla is the judgment okay because as soon as it was out there was that there's always been that this has been the guiding light and then the next thing for camilla because the crown really look at that the government it's the government allowing her to be, as a matter of fact. And look how successful she's been at that. So, yeah. This has gone right past the TV series and, and spoken to how she feels about the actual real life situation. Fortune brought her here. There's always been judgment. And uh, there will always be the government. And she's found some way to make a perfect balance between all, all of those things. Kudos to her for whatever else she might have done. I really have to think that what's going on on TV has very little to do with what's going on with Charles in his real life, except to the extent that Camilla would influence it. So let me know what you think. If you think that Charles is being influenced by the crown, or let me know what you'd like me to read on in general, because I'm just uh, guessing here. All right. So thanks for watching anyway. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so this is the newest edition. This is uh, the second time I purchased from this group. Uh, and uh, the, these cards are called Revival Art Tarot Second Edition. And uh, they're from Taracho uh, Studios, which you can see right here. And they come to me, for, I think it's from Russia via the Netherlands. But uh, they're a lot of money. And um, But they're beautiful cards, and you'll see. So they come in a very typical little cardboard box. No big deal there at all. Um, then the um, instruction booklet, again, is not uh, anything to write home about. It's just a typical little instruction booklet. The one good thing is that it is easily uh, read. And uh, in the uh, regular, uh, in the lower arcana cards, 
they've got an extra card in each uh, suit. So you know, you've got cups, wands, swords, and uh, I can never think of the forward suit off the top of my head, uh, pinnacles. Uh, but so you, they go all the way to the ten of, of swords, for instance. The next one then should be a page, but here we have a princess of swords. And then after the princess of swords, you still get the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. So you have one extra card for each of those four suits. So instead of 78, uh, 79, uh, 80, 81, 82 cards total in the pack. So that's interesting. So if, if that princess um, confused you, you could just take those four cards out and use them for some special occasion or never use them at all, or put them in there. And uh, this gives you an idea of how to divide the extra card. Uh, so very interesting. Then the cards themselves, they're really good stock. Uh, once you get them broken in, and what I mean by that is, you know, when they come off uh, production, they're really pressed together, and there's no air between the cards, and you can't hardly get between them. So it takes a little bit of shuffling and, and getting them uh, some air between the cards uh, before they're usable, really, and, uh, and not sticking to each other. And then the back of them is beautiful, and I haven't discovered anything particularly unusual about the back, um, except maybe until this very minute. Let's see. If you have the cards this way, you'll notice that there's a very small little rose right here. So if you see that small rose here up in the right hand corner, then you know this card is going to be upright as it should. However, if this card was inverted, that small little rose becomes two roses. Okay, so if you see it, two roses up here rather than one, then you know that card is going to be inverted. So that's the example. Uh, I like knowing that. I don't know. It just gives you a little edge uh, when you're dealing the cards. And now I can straighten them out and not have to turn it over. I know that this, this is uh, inverted and this is straight. Now, to look at this art is amazing. And each one of these is a work of art that's referenced in the guidebook. For instance, uh, if I look at this uh, Fool, number one, with a major arcana, and it tells me that the Fool uh, is, in fact, the name of that piece of art is called A Jester by Philippe Mercier. And, um, and then it gives me the uh, divination for the card, uh, beginnings, uh, possibilities, pleasure, etc. The next card, The Magician, if you were to see that one, that is a work of art called The Astronomer by uh, Candlelight, The Astronomer by Candlelight, and it's by, I guess it's going to be Gary Du. So uh, my foreign pronunciations aren't very good, but I do give it a try. So the cards themselves, you can see they go right to the edge of the card. They're beautiful pieces of art. And thought has gone into choosing these cards for the um, uh, position they stand for. The one thing uh, that's not uh, evidence, for instance, um, they're not always um, clear that, for instance, a two of pentacles is a two of pentacles. It might not have two pentacles on the card to tell you that. So they're a little um, interesting there. You should kind of look through the cards and understand what each one stands for first. But, I mean, look at them. They are absolutely beautiful. And it always feels to me like uh, intention has gone into making the selections of these actual pieces of art before uh, they uh, turn them into uh, tarot cards. And I like that. And I think you like them, too. Hey, I'm Mark. It's been my journey through tarot. I'm going to do it all again tomorrow if you want to come. So... Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.